This is Steve Downs, the voice of Master Chief, Sierra 117, and you're listening to Podcast Unlocked, the world's number one Xbox podcast. Now, finish this fight. Master Chief, out. Hello and welcome to Podcast Unlocked, episode 463. I'm not just hosting today, uh, but Ryan is actually not out. He is here. But I'm hosting because last week I was supposed to host, but then we had a crazy week. We had a lot of emergency episodes and big news. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're just shaking things up this week. So joining me, as I just said, is Brian McCaffrey. I'm happy to, I, I can just be here. This is great. Yeah, it's so weird to introduce you on the show. It's, it's <laughs> cool, though. And then we also have Brendan Tyrell. Welcome. Hello. I like your Halloween decorations. Thank you. I've been I've been feeling very festive all September. I'm so excited. Uh, also very excited because we have a special guest to talk about all things Next Generation. Welcome, Pikachu Lita. Katie, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, so could you tell us a little bit about yourself and a bit about how you fit into the gaming community? I have watched some of your streams. I really enjoy them. I love the energy you bring. Also, I love that you were recently streaming Spirit Bear, which is one of my... Uh, favorite games recently to come to Game Pass? Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Um, I always get so hyped when people tell me that. I'm like, little old me, what? Yeah. Um, so I am essentially a uh, charity and diversity focused variety streamer. Um, I've been streaming on Switch since uh, 2014, since I think August 2014. And um, since then, um, I recently got partnered uh, back in July. Um, long time coming with that, needless to say. Um, but yeah, I mean, so I've been on Twitch for a, a good amount of years, needless to say. I went from, you know, streaming just for my PlayStation to switching over to PC, Switch, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm pretty much all over the place when it comes to the different games that I play. I mean, um, I'll pretty much play anything that's not Call of Duty and sports games. Um, <laughs> you may catch me playing Apex and then I'll turn around and switch to some kind of farming simulation type style game. And then you'll see me playing some type of horror game and maybe you'll see me playing a platformer. I'm really just like all over the place when it comes to the different um, things that I play. Um, like I actually am streaming later on today and uh, I'm going to be playing the new Left 4 Dead update. So I'm really just all over the place. But the biggest thing kind of in my stream, in addition to just having a good variety of games, um, we're very focused on community and my community is uh, very diverse. Um, we are uh, POC friendly, queer friendly, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I do a lot of charity fundraising a lot of the time. I usually do like multiple fundraisers a year um, for kind of extended periods. And we talk about everything from games to movies to sort of real life things. It's it's a big old happy mix of a lot. It's it's a lot in one little package, I like to say. So <laughs> Yeah, that's so fantastic. Uh, one of the things that really stood out to me about your work is that you also really love anime. And anytime I see someone who's like super into gaming, but then also anime, I'm just like, hey. Right, up. right. Oh, God, <laughs> yeah. I, I tell people all the time, I'm like, it, when it comes to some things, like I, especially kind of like the older anime series, I'm like, yeah, I probably know more about that than I probably do a lot of the older uh game series because i'm kind of showing my age here um <laughs> I'm, I'm 26 so like all everybody's like oh these like super nintendo titles and also i'm like well my first was nintendo 64 and <laughs> so i'm kind of out of the loop when it comes to those things so but i i do love anime i will say yeah yeah, yeah. We uh, often make jokes about that in uh, our trivia block where I have a hard time with some of the older Xbox questions. So I'm just like, you know what, I will try my best. Uh, but right. more, on, <laughs> yeah, more on that later. This is going to be a good one. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. Let's go ahead and get into something that is very huge. Ryan, we had to have you on the show this week. You're yeah. like, Wait, did, we get, did we get Pika's, uh, her, her URL oh, for her yeah. on Twitch? I, I don't know if I heard it or not. I don't think we did. Uh, I did not tell you. Was it, was I supposed to say it i'm so sorry Lord. um <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll plug it for you it's fine miranda i think you, we've got it here right yes i've got that so you can go to twitch.tv slash pikachu lita so just exactly as you think it's spelled p-i-c p-i-k-a chulita and then you just get you just get a whole lot of goodness there so definitely Thank give her you. a follow yes so no, back to you right because like the, again we have something super exciting we had to have you on the show because you have series x at your home that's crazy. Tell us all about it. 
back there. Uh, it's not the the series. The one X is on the screen right now. If you're curious, that is just the one. If you're like, that looks really familiar. That's doesn't look new at all. It's because it's not. That's the that's the <laughs> Xbox One X. As part of the strange s conditions of the embargo, I can't just leave the dashboard sitting there, even though, you know, it sounds like, well, that's why would why would that be the case? You got to just respect what what the conditions are of these things. So it's not on, but you can see it's back there. That is the real deal. And yeah, we've got uh, I put up a big thing yesterday, Monday, as uh, so we're recording on Tuesday just sort of the first impressions of the console itself, as well as a bunch of backwards compatibility tests. And I have to say, like, if you have a Series X on pre-order, when you take it out of the box, it is, I think you will be very impressed by it physically because it is, it's very, like, dense, but in a in a good way. Like, it's you pick it up and it's got some heft to it. And it, like, it feels like a $500 thing. Like, it's just like, wow, okay, this, it's, it's not just some light little, like, I, I mean, the Wii was a great console, but you kind of, you know, you pick up the Wii, which I actually have buried somewhere over there. If I'd have thought, <laughs> if I'd have thought this out ahead of time, but like the Wii, it like, you know, it's feels like a toy. It's like a, it was what the 250, I think back in the day for the Wii, but uh, you know, this feels like a $500 thing. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's super nice. It's the startup sound when you hit the power button is the same as it's been for a while, which I said this in my coverage, but uh, which, by the way, you can just go read on IGN or watch on YouTube. I was this is like the silliest thing of all time. And I recognize that. And I'm prefacing that uh, when I say this, but I was kind of disappointed that it wasn't a cool new startup sound when you push the button. I know I'm sure they're just going for consistency, but uh, but anyway, so yeah, same startup sound. It'll sound very familiar. And yes, I, I've just, I keep, get the question a lot. It can lay down on its side. Um, I think it, I think it looks great standing up. Like it's very present and kind of authoritative <laughs> laying down to me. It just kind of looks like a fireplace log. I don't think it looks that great, <laughs> but again, totally subjective. That's just my dumb opinion that you're welcome to, to not share. But it definitely there there are feet on one side of it, uh, the the right well yeah the right side I guess for me and for you. So if you do want to lay it down, uh, you've got it. You know it's it's designed to do that. And the I keep getting asked this as well, even though we've covered this before. But just for folks who didn't hear it, the bottom stand when you're standing it up does not come off. So for those of oh. you that do want to lay it down, uh, it, the stand is still going to be there. It's fine. I mean you can. It's not it's not a big deal. The air airflow is not impacted. It's designed to be stood up on its stand. And there's a little kind of rubber edge on the stand to help it just stay in place. But anyway, so yeah, it's it is a it is a nice console. Like it's it, it from a from a just industrial design feel, uh fit and finish kind of perspective. And the the other point I would make on that is it's exceptionally quiet. Like it's I don't know if I've heard a quieter modern console uh, than than this thing. I mean, it's I mean, not counting like the switch, which is, you know, just a totally different kind of as far as a meaty PC like horsepower console from, you know, P from let's just say the PS3 360 era forward. I mean, it is it is dead silent when it's idle and even running backwards compatible games. Uh, I had I was doing comparison tests of the loading times. I had Red Dead Redemption Two running, and on the One X, which you can see, I don't know if you can see it. It's that's that's what's on. That's what's on my second shelf down. Mm -hmm. That you you can hear the fan going. Like you, there's a little bit of of noise to it, but the same game, Red Dead Two, running on the on the Series X, completely quiet. So the caveat there is. It's an old game. The Red Dead is pushing the One X to its limits. It's not pushing the Series X to its limits. So we'll see how it sounds once I'm able to play some new games that are that are optimized for Series X. But so far, so good in that category. And then otherwise, yeah. The the big takeaway is that it re like all the the quick resume stuff, the loading times, those things that you've been hearing Microsoft go on and on about this year. 
they were not BSing you. Like they, it's all legit. Quick resume works great. You can just bounce between like four games at a time and it, it leaves off right, you know, picks up right where you left off on each one. And then backwards compatible stuff. I mean, the games load way faster, like not a little bit. It ranges from noticeably faster to like night and day faster. So I tried, uh, I've, I've thrown a bunch of stuff at it. Red Dead, Halo 5, Control, uh, I uh, Fallout 4, I threw uh, GTA 4 at it from the 360. And if you're, before you leave a comment saying, what about this game? There is a spreadsheet that Microsoft sent uh, of the games that are validated and work so far. They're all going to work. But for now, this is a preview. The, you know, the system's not out yet. Everything's not done yet. Not everything works on the Series X just yet. So like GTA 5 was one of the things I for sure wanted to try. It, ha it doesn't work on the Series X yet. To be super clear, it will. Do not take this out of context, Internet. Uh, but there is, there is, it's, it's, they're adding more things as they go. So I'm just throwing as much as I can at it. But yeah, the, the loading times alone, you'll never want to go back to your Xbox One is the, is the end of the, <laughs> that sentence. Dang. Yeah, I was about to say, can I raise my hand and ask if you played Fusion Frenzy yet? But <laughs> my, my <laughs> yeah, not on the joke. list. Not yet. <laughs> oh, man. That's fine, though. Oh, so exciting. I guess what's, what's, what's the one game that you found as the most notable improvement? I, I, you've mentioned so many games at this point, but what's the one that you just want to stick with as far as testing? What I've thrown at it, I mean, Red Dead's the most extreme example. I mean, the, mm -hmm. it's still not like instant to get in there because, you know, the whole thing with Red Dead is it's one big loading time to get into the world and then there aren't any loading times once you're in the game. But that one big loading time is cut from, I don't remember exactly what it is. Just go several watch our- Several minutes, it feels yeah, like. <laughs> several minutes down to like a minute and a half. Like it's it's super duper noticeable. But even on stuff that's quicker, like Halo 5, you know, I just jumped into wherever, whatever mission I had last played, like however many years ago in the campaign, which I, you know, I'm not a big fan of the campaign. So it's wherever I had last left it. Um, I was like, okay, well, let's just A, 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 like, let's just load it, go, 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 go. And it just loaded the mission like that. Like it was, whereas on the Xbox One, it's reasonably quick, but on the Series X, the, the loading bar just goes, boop, done. And then that's it. So it's, uh, the SSD is super impressive. Well, I'm very excited to see more as you're able to talk about it. Uh, but you know, we still have to get those in our hands eventually. And so we actually got to have our episode before Priority Stuff went live. Microsoft made a kind of a, a snide remark about, you know, that we're all going to know where to pre-order and when, uh, kind of as a little commentary on the uh, PS5. I, I would almost say fiasco. <laughs> pre-order, like the whole mess of that. Uh, so I have to ask you guys, how did pre-orders go for each of you? Brandon, going to you first. Uh, it was a pain in the ass. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Um, <laughs> I was up like I don't know 30 minutes before and like prepped all my all my windows open Walmart Amazon Best Buy Kmart I think I even tried <laughs> Kmart that doesn't even wow. exist anymore I don't know like I I just went across <laughs> the retailers Microsoft obviously and um I got close a couple of times a few multiple times I had it in my cart and then you know credit card information was already in there and then somewhere between having it in my cart and checking out uh, it just evaporated. So um, I didn't get one. And then Amazon opened a second round, I think it was, later that day. And I was able to pre-order one there. And then I got the email saying that it might not arrive on time. So um, it was not as painful as the PS5 one because I ended up not even getting a PS5. Uh, and I tried. But um, I, I supposedly have one. We'll see when it arrives. But uh, it was... It was not as uh, easy as Microsoft's Twitter made me think it might be. <laughs> to be fair, they never said it was going to be easy. They just That's said, you'll know it, you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> they just said it would be fair. Yeah, that yeah. was their whole thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, except for all the retailers didn't necessarily put their, re their orders live. And I feel like maybe if they would have all pushed it live at the same time, it could have been better. Maybe. Who yeah, it was a weird say? staggering, wasn't it? Like Amazon yeah. wasn't up for a few hours until after the uh, the initial batch went out. So it, it was right. strange. I'm not sure. May, maybe it was a retailer decision, right? Like maybe they decided to stagger their, their inventory so it wasn't just like a mad dash. 
Yeah. Now, Pika, I know you have a, a great gaming PC, but were you going to try to get any of the consoles for, right now? Or Yeah, yeah, actually. Um, I actually managed to secure PS5. I keep wanting to say PS4. I, it's just like I do that with years. I'll sit there and be like, 2019, and I'm like, 2020 is almost over. Um, but yeah, I actually managed to get a PS5. Um, I did not think I was going to get one, so I missed the... I don't remember what I was doing. Um, I missed the batch, that, the first batch that hit on Amazon. And again, mm -hmm. nobody knew that was coming. It was just like, they're up on Amazon. Good luck. And I wasn't able to get either of them. So I was like, oh, okay. And then I found out that they went live on Best Buy. Um, so, man, I sat there and I, <laughs> it was, I felt like, I felt ashamed for like the, the depths that like the, just the steps that I was doing to try to get one because like I, God, I was, I pressed buttons so many times hoping for a change because um, <laughs> I would like, it was, it was like, I, it was, it was almost kind of like I was making a little bit of progress like each time, but after it would be after a little while. So I'd be sitting there, um, you know, trying to actually add it to my cart. And it was telling me for like a smooth, like 15, 10 or 15 minutes that it couldn't add to cart. Then it let me put it in my cart. And then uh, the main one that I got stuck on was the screen where, um, you know, I was saying like that I wanted to get it for pickup at this location. And um, it wouldn't prompt, it wouldn't even let me to move to the next screen to put in my cart info. Mm -hmm. And it just i was so tired of pressing that button it was it was weird because it was sending me confirmation texts about the whole order pickup thing oh, really? um, but i wasn't yeah but i wasn't moving past that and i was like i told my best friend i was like i'm just not gonna get one because i have work tomorrow it was this was about like 12 o'clock or so and i was right. like i'm tired i kind of just don't care anymore but i knew i did i was sitting there like i don't care anymore and they were sitting there still pressing the button and he was like, well, I'm going to be up, so I will try to get one for you. And I sent him, I sent him my, I sent him my card info, I sent him everything because I, I trust him with my, my life. So I didn't care. And I woke up and I got the notification, 500 plus dollars has been, you know, there was a withdrawal from your account for bestbuy.com. And um, then I had got the email saying that it had been ordered. And so far, I have not gotten any emails saying that it had been canceled. But to my knowledge, people at Best Buy were safe. It was the people that kind of ordered, I think, through Amazon or Walmart that were getting yeah. like order cancellation emails and stuff. But to my knowledge, Best Buy so far is good because I have not gotten any. Um, I haven't gotten any emails, but he actually ordered one, but then he also was one of those people that got selected to do the one through actual like Sony. So he was like, mm. I'm going to get one of those. And then if I need to, for, for whatever reason, you can't get yours. I'll just let you have, I'll just have you buy this one off of me. Cause really right. what messed it up is it's, it's, it's bots and resellers. They're, they're yeah. setting stuff up to flip it. And it's, I mean, it was kind of reminding me of the, um, the new graphics cards that came out, people, it, they would be on there. It wouldn't even be a minute and they were sold out. And I was yeah, like, how do you dollars on eBay? Right. Yeah. And I'm like, how do you even compete with a computer to do that sort of stuff? It's unfortunate, but uh, at least with this, I'm, I, I'm so far in the clear. So fingers crossed. I yeah, I feel like as you're describing your experience with that, everyone, regardless of what you were pre-ordering, like you can feel those steps. Like you remember when you're sitting at your PC, at least for me, like I tried Best Buy, I tried everything for both consoles. And I was so grateful that I at least was able to secure my Xbox pre-order mm -hmm. uh, within about 45 minutes. Whereas for PS5, it took me like two hours. <laughs> right. Two right, plus exactly. hours. And it's yeah. just so much. Now, Ryan, I know you obviously have a unit at your home right now, but did you <laughs> go through? I, I have to send this one back in a little yeah. bit. Yeah, but did you have to go through the madness? Did you get all the pre oh, yeah. you needed? Yeah, and I was lucky I did get each one. Um, but it, I tell you, it's it's stressful. Like even, and mm -hmm. I, let me, I realize there are a lot of real world, actual yeah. life stressful things in 2020. <laughs> But within the context of wanting the new video game toy, it was stressful. Um, 
because it's like just like Brandon, I was I had all my tabs open, different retailers. I'm armed. I'm ready to go. And yeah, it starts. And and I had the same issue that Pika did of like just trying to just having a click like it was like Diablo. It was like D- retailer Diablo, just like click, <laughs> click, 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 click over and over. Um, and the same thing that that Pika had where uh because it was my it was Walmart was the one that went through first on on actually both the the PS5 and the Series X for me. But it was the, it was that thing that she had where where like first it was a struggle to get it in the cart and then eventually mm-hmm. it gets in the cart and it's just you know just trying to click through and then it's when you're at that last screen it, the the like place order button and you're just like please work and then it's just like you know you get the spinny icon and then it just puts you back at that same so like and you just every time you're like please work please work and then eventually it works and you do that then you just want to melt in your chair like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I had that done. same issue with Target. This Target was like constantly in my cart and then I'd hit place order and then I would say your cart is empty. Yeah. And I just kept like, it was over and over and over. I'm just jamming that place order button. And I, <laughs> for a split second, I had this thought. I'm like, oh God, I hope these aren't going through. I, <laughs> I, was, I was just about 30, to say that. I'm like, you're going to wake up. Xboxes, yeah. right. You're going to wake up and there's going to be like negative 30 grand in your account. Right. I was like, oh God. <laughs> Well, it's funny, I, I, all the children in my neighborhood. It's <laughs> funny that you guys say that. So on the on the PS5, which was you know the one that happened first, the Xbox was what like four or five days later. Mm-hmm. For the PS5, I as I was trying to get through, uh, I actually did get a text from my bank saying like, "Is this <laughs> fraud? Like, is this please you know press yet type yes if this is real or press no if this is fraud?" It's like no, yes, this is real, which. You know, you get, I get frustrated that, but then I have to take a breath and go, no, it's good that it did that because if it actually was fraud, I would want them to flag it to me. Right. So yeah, it was, uh, it was totally the like first world video game toy stress, but it's to the point where there's got to be a better way to, to do this next time. I mean, I, and even it we it might not be like this again for the inevitable mid cycle refresh like the Xbox Series X X and, and the <laughs> and the PS5 Pro X squared yeah exactly yeah. Nice. um but so maybe we're not going to go through this again for another 5 to 7 years but these retailers and the and Microsoft Sony they somebody's got to figure something the heck out because yeah. Yeah. there's got to, I mean it it beats having to physically go line up at a store and and literally camp out overnight. I know there are a lot of people that actually like that experience, the sort of communal experience that that goes with that. But I, yeah, there's got to be a better way to to buy things. I mean, uh Pika you mentioned the the um Sony doing that invite only thing for for like the day or two later. Can we just do that for all of them like for the entire stock allotment for both yeah, of them next scale. time like yeah just you know you're you're already registered on xbox live you know i'm not saying prioritize it by gamer score or by years mm-hmm. that you've been on xbox live anything like that but just there's got to be a better way to do this yeah like maybe just like a random i wouldn't even be mad if they did it like a kind of like how sony did it like with just the first batch of consoles just make it to where it's almost kind of like entering a raffle. And then yeah. obviously maybe on like further restocks, not necessarily when they release the mid-cycle, you know, upgraded version, but just maybe the second batch, then you can make it to where people, you know, can sort of click and just buy normally from retailers, but something different. And then maybe some kind of, I just, maybe I'm, maybe I'm, maybe I'm overestimating something here, but I feel like we're teaching robots to feel emotions. Can we not create some kind of algorithm or something to where we can get rid of bots that way that they're not buying things up and then allowing people to sit and flip this stuff for, 
you know, yeah. however much on the end. Like, it's got to be something. Because if, 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 like, I honestly feel like, I mean, granted, when you get a whole bunch of website traffic anyway, you're you're bound to encounter those issues. I mean, the, th- the same thing in, in a completely unrelated gaming space. When uh, Brianna's lingerie line, Fenty, uh, first launched, I mean, it was like the same thing. They had a virtual line and it was like, your wait time is 40 minutes, something like that. But, um, you know, it's just maybe just maybe it would be less of a hassle when you're not competing with tech literally technology yeah so no, you, I don't you're know. so you're so right with like because uh, and a, a good example that comes to mind now actually is is um i like Ticketmaster is straight up the devil let me just preface it <laughs> <by saying laughs> right. that. they're a horrible live nation all of that i think they're all just one giant merged company now anyway yeah. that's just ridiculous but but they they have they do have that like verified fan thing for certain stuff like I know mm-hmm. Springsteen's done that and some of the other bigger artists have done that where it is like it weeds out bots and and mm-hmm. scalpers by there's like a verification process that you have to go through to prove that you're real and I feel like Microsoft and Sony could totally figure out a similar thing yep. to so that so that we're not seeing uh, the scalpers mm-hmm. being the ones that are that are profiteering off this stuff because. It's it's all us early adopters that want them anyway. Like yeah. it's it's their it's the fans that want them, mm-hmm. uh, that they want that first batch. So yeah. Please, yeah, please, Sony and Microsoft figure it out. Now, I, I would say I would add for my part, having done both, I don't think either one was better or worse than the other. Honestly, yeah, like I agree, Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Okay, it was fair, but it also allowed the bots to get in there, whereas Sony. Maybe not as many bots got in because it was chaos, but also that meant a lot of fans weren't ready for it and weren't and maybe would have lost out too. So it's just like two two sides of the same disgusting coin that you had to lick right. to, yeah. to try yeah. and get these things. And there's got to be a better way. I, I know GameStop tried to do that virtual line thing. I, I was in it for a while. I never made it to the end. I don't know if any of you did. But I, I yeah. don't think their system like they had a virtual line, but I don't think they actually yeah. had like the infrastructure to support what a virtual line actually is. Having right. been in several virtual lines to get things, it's just like a like a waiting like yeah. a, a waiting screen, and then when something opens up, they just throw you into yeah. the uh, the economy. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. There, it's there are two problems, right? It's the resale market driving bots and people scalping. Um, I guess that's the term you would use for this. Uh, and then the other side of the coin is just infrastructure. Like I, I don't. Maybe this is the first time since since console console gaming and gaming in general has ballooned so much in the last five six years. Um, you know, I think it's there was a, a report that came out recently, but it was, it was like millions, maybe a billion people play video games now. So I'm wondering if they were just caught off guard by the demand for it. But you know, Apple handles iPhones every two or three years, and that's sort of the same bag. So. Um, I think you have to solve for the the resale market and the uh, the demand market, and I don't know how an online retailer like Amazon uh, didn't see it coming, right? Right. I'm, I'm I'm real quick curious. I'd like to just go around, uh, starting with Pika. Did did any of us consider going to a brick and mortar store to to queue up? Because I certainly saw examples of people doing that, and they handed out tickets, and you know the allowance was small. But did Pika, starting with you, did, did anybody consider actually going to a store? You know, I did because I saw that, like, supposedly GameStop was doing in-person stuff. And I have one that's, like, right up the street from me. And and truth be told, I I, I live in Memphis. And, and it's not, like... My, my ability to go and get stuff here is a lot easier than, like, let's say going someplace in L.A. Um, like, for example, I remember when... Um, oh, gosh, there was... <laughs> I always tell this story and it's so funny because I realized I got so lucky with this. Um, there was a price error on, uh, gosh, I hope Nintendo doesn't hear this. They're going to be like, what? Um, oh, there was a, yeah, well, technically right. it was Target's fault, not the, you know. So at Target, there was like a website error where you could stack coupons. <laughs> so I remember this. Yes. <laughs> and I managed to get a Switch and two games for $150 total. Oh, nice. Yes. And I yeah, I got lucky because, I mean, by that time, me li- I'm in Central Time Zone and um, Target was already getting ready to close. 
But that morning, right when Target opened, I went and picked up my order because a lot of people that did like the ship to home option, their orders got canceled. Mm -hmm. But the people that were going in person and picking it up were a lot luckier. But then you had in like the more kind of populated cities um, with maybe like a sort of, I guess, maybe a bigger gaming, maybe community. You had like, like think in LA, you had like, you know, 20 people going to Target to buy a Switch at once, they're going to be like, something's up here. So I, d- living in the place where I live, needless to say, I can kind of get away with that sort of stuff. So I genuinely feel like if they were doing ones in my area, it would have been very small, but I didn't know. There was no way for, I right. I had no way of confirming it because I remember seeing like rumors that they were doing some, but I was like, I don't want to bank on that because I don't know if it's going to be true. And then, not going to lie, COVID stuff kind of made me a little bit anxious. I'm like, I'd rather probably not do that. So, yeah, but I, it, the thought did cross my mind, but I just had no way of verifying if they were doing it or not. Anybody else? I know I, because I did, I was the same thing. I For COVID, yep. I, I didn't even consider the option. I was, oh, it, yeah. it was a, no, it was a no-go same. for me. Hell yeah, no. I think, I think with all of us being in the Bay Area, um, for the IGN staff, it's just, or, or in LA, like this just, it's just too many people. It's yeah. just, yeah. just stay inside. And I think that's also probably something that kind of contributed to the pre-order madness was that most people are probably uh, ordering online rather than going in store. I know a lot of people mm-hmm. probably traditionally would have just gone to a store and pre-ordered, but you know, for that's a really reasons. good point. It's like yeah. a perfect storm. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. There you have it. <laughs> but we well, all got a series X. So yeah. good news. Now, let's get to the news because uh, it turns out consoles are not done yet. Uh, so we will have to do these again in the future. So hopefully someone is listening to all of our complaints because uh, we'll have to do this. So, so Brandon, I'm going to go to you for this one. Uh, we're hmm. kind of skipping around on our news a little bit. But so Phil's says consoles are not done yet. Well, we have a report from Yahoo Finance. Oh, you want me to you want me to take the news? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Going to the sports desk. (laughs) Speaking to Yahoo Finance, Spencer confirmed that Microsoft is still planning on developing dedicated gaming hardware, at least in the short term, even though services like Xbox Xbox Cloud Gaming, Google Stadia, Amazon. uh, Sorry, there's a cat. I'm distracted. I'm so sorry. (laughs) Uh, Google Stadia, Amazon Luna are changing the ways that uh, the world plays games. Uh, Quote, in terms of future hardware, absolutely, I think we're going to see more console hardware down the road, Spencer stated. Just like in video, just like in music, it's not that streaming has cut off device innovation. I think we'll continue to see that, and that's absolutely what we're planning for, end of quote. Um, So, yeah, I mean, we've heard this repeatedly that, you know, physical consoles aren't going anywhere for a while. Um, there's a good point that eventually we'll stop hearing it because at some point I think physical hardware will be phased out. Um, but for now, you know, there will be another generation of consoles, maybe two, pro- possibly three. Um, and it makes sense, right? Because the infrastructure that you need in order to support entirely online gaming right, without a physical component to it, um, I don't think we're anywhere near that, at least in the US. Like major city hubs, you can get away with it. Um, but there are so many facets that go into, you know, being able to play a video game without anything um, other than your phone, really. And uh, I don't think we're anywhere anywhere near there yet. Uh, I have I have friends who are moving back to Florida, and they are saying that, like, they have, they are still on, like, 56K dial-up because they live outside city limits and, and kind of the boonies. But, you know, fortunately, they're, they're close enough to a, an apartment building that they can run cable from it and, and get faster internet. So... Um, it just goes to show, I know living in this like San Francisco bubble, like I have gigabit internet running to my house. Uh, it's a, it's a miracle of technology and I'm, I'm glad to live here. Uh, but that is not the case for the majority of the U S and I, I actually I can't even get gigabit internet where I live. <laughs> and I and what's well. funny it's is crazy. we only, we only live a couple miles away from each other. So, yeah. um, I, I think it's, you know, it's going to be a while before that, that we're set up enough in order to, uh, to sustain that. So I will also say that it kind of feels like cloud gaming as we see that growing feels almost like handhelds in a way. Like there's like again kind of an add-on to gaming. Like they're part of the ecosystem. They're important. They're maybe really good for a certain kind of audience, but they're not necessarily the catch-all for everything. Um, and probably maybe won't be 
or they could, we don't really know how the future is going to go. But I think Phil Spencer made a really great point that there's a lot of innovation to be done with hardware. I mean, especially I think if you look at Nintendo who develop very specific hardware for their games, like a lot of what you have there, you couldn't just do with any device. You have to have their, their assist, like their system to do that. Um, so Pika, what do you think about kind of cloud gaming in the future of, you know, consoles? I think I, I know, especially again, as a PC player, like, you know, there's, there's also that thing to consider is just like PCs are so, so far advanced. And we see how Microsoft is constantly moving more and more to include PC in their ecosystem and make sure that all of their games are there as well. Right. Um, well, I definitely agree that I think that we're, most people are a ways off from the whole cloud gaming thing. Um, you've got too many cities, um, needless to say, where just the the proper internet to sustain proper gaming. And obviously, you know, they'll say like, oh, well, you know, I remember I think one of the main sort of selling points with the Stadia was basically that it did not require some like massively like fast connection. But at the same time, um, to my knowledge that, I mean, that kind of still affected like how games loaded and sort of how they looked and things like that. And obviously people kind of want quality when they play. Like even here, it was funny that he was saying, you know, he has gigabit. I, I have unfortunately Xfinity and I'm supposed to be getting the, the, the step right under gigabit, but I'm getting like 30 down Mm -hmm. and I've had technicians out here. Nobody can figure out what exactly is going on um my upload's great my upload's exactly what it should be but my download's not um so i think that when it comes to the whole okay <laughs> when that it comes to their audio listeners <laughs> um when it comes to when it comes to cloud based gaming i almost want to say it then becomes almost like an accessibility issue because you're going to have people living in these cities that are not going to have access to the proper sort of hardware or like maybe internet connection that's going to be able to sort of manage cloud-based gaming. So I am hoping that physical consoles don't go anywhere anytime soon. I mean, I think it's one of those things that they should have it available adjacent to physical, you know, actual consoles um, or like kind of how um, I almost feel like the digital version of these next gen consoles is kind of like the it's kind of almost like a happy medium. I mean, it's obviously Mm -hmm. not like necessarily cloud based gaming, but it's also not having everything physical. Um, Now, I will say that uh, one thing that I think that Sony needs to kind of do better about um, is, for example, uh, Whenever you like if PSN is down or something like that, uh, you can't access the games you bought digitally. And I think that's a bit ridiculous because it's like, well, I paid for those games. Why don't I have access to them kind of thing, I guess. And maybe I'm, you know, underestimating how that all works or something. But um, but yeah, I I like the fact that we have digital versions of consoles and that we're introducing and we're kind of exploring cloud based gaming Um, because some people especially I mean, some people just like to be kind of more mobile. I know that I like the mobile sort of gaming ability, not necessarily like playing on my phone, but that's one reason I like my Switch. I almost never dock my Switch unless I'm streaming specifically because I like to be able to lay in bed and play it because I'm lazy. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, so I liked I like the concept of having cloud-based gaming as a sort of extra or sort of another option, but I don't ever want to see it become the norm or the standard because I feel like too many people are going to be excluded from that, unfortunately. Right. I totally agree. And Ryan, what's your take on it? Well, I think, Pika, I think you make a great point about that in that uh, I think that's actually a big reason why you see the community reaction to xCloud has been pretty much universally positive other mm-hmm. than the... Uh, the Apple, the iOS problem, which is, which is of course, so that's that people were mad at Apple justifiably, not Microsoft on that. But, but yeah, like whereas Stadia has been, it's fair to say pretty negatively received by the gaming community because it's cloud and nothing. Whereas to your exact point with Xbox, it's the cl- cloud X cloud is supplemental. So it's like, it's just there it's there as like a bonus for you on mm-hmm. top of the the set top boxes. So right. 
yeah, I think you're so right. And like Microsoft's taking a really good approach to it that way. But at least, I mean, 5G is starting to roll out now, uh, which is obviously it's a heck of a lot better than 4G, than LTE. So as that becomes more normal across the country and the world, hopefully that like that will hopefully help pave the way to make cloud more more of a viable thing in the in the sort of long term. But but yeah, for now it's it Microsoft's playing it really smart with with having xCloud be this like little side it's like your it's like your fries on the side with your like that's <laughs> yeah. the, that's the burger and xCloud's the fries. <laughs> like you wouldn't order just the fries unless you're right. a monster like me. Right. But, <laughs> but, you, but the you want the fry the fries are nice with the burger that's all i'm saying mm -hmm. i'm hungry it's lunchtime <laughs> <laughs> all right well we have a lot more news too including things for our consoles which is very exciting uh i am i love i love expansion cards i love memory chips i love these little compact things that are going to store our uh, our future our gaming uh, so they announced that the Seagate one terabyte expansion card that is proprietary for the Xbox Series S and X is going to cost $220, which is cool. I mean, it's very cute, and I'm glad it is at least. It's just a small little little disc, but uh, that, that thing packs a, a lot of a punch for a lot of money. Uh, so, Brandon, coming back to you on this one. Yeah, what, it's, what do you think about these? <laughs> I mean, sticker shock, right? Like that is a lot of money, especially after you just drop five hundred dollars on your, as Ryan said, your big new gaming toy. Um, <clears throat> however, it's it's actually comparable to to the value of those drives, right? Um, so we're in this weird position where you don't need it. You don't you don't need it to function the way that it's intended to function. You can easily go out and get a massive like two terabyte three point one USB drive and just cold store your games and move them over. Um, so I, I think it's nice. There's a proprietary option. It is super expensive though, and I'm sitting here thinking like I don't because I for for reference I'm I'm the kind of guy that I like I I'll pay a little bit more just because it's the official product and I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to think about it. I can just plug it in and I'm good. Um, in this scenario, like I, I don't have a, a massive hard drive, uh, external hard drive that I can use. So I'd have to buy that anyway. So now I'm sitting here thinking like, what do I want to do? Um, I, I, I don't know. Like it, it's, it's, it's expensive, but it is not overpriced if that makes sense. Um, so I think there are ways to get around it. I, I just don't know that you always run into that issue where, you know, what if I buy something that isn't compatible? What if I buy something that, you know, doesn't work as well as it could? Um, so while I think it's it's nice that there is an option, I think it's, we're going to probably see a lot of sales of big, uh, huge USB 3.1 storage, uh, storage drives in order to just move your games back and forth. Because if you watch Ryan's preview, IGN.com, nice plug there, um, <laughs> it's, it's really not hard. It's like you click a couple buttons and you move games back and forth. So... Um, I don't think at the end of the day it's a big deal, but I think that charging two hundred twenty dollars for something that expands storage space in an age where games are a hundred gigs and only growing bigger, um, I think it's going to take a lot of people back. Right, uh, right. I actually do want to bounce to you really quickly for that yeah. because you did explain that there is that alternative to having to buy a two hundred two hundred twenty dollar <laughs> like little card. Like, what what are the options there? As yeah, Brandon was uh, mentioning, I. Totally agree with Brandon. Like it's, I, I'm not complaining about the price as far as like, I get that NVMe SSD tech in it's that's industry what, standard. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. just what it costs, but it's still expensive. Like mm -hmm. it, it can be, it can be worth the money, you know, that can be market value, but it's still a lot of money. For some reason, the extra 20 bucks over like 199 <laughs> just feels like, it just feels like a extra little like punch in the face for some reason. I don't know why, but um, it's like oh, just an extra ten percent on top of that that two hundred bucks. But uh, but yeah, the what I I mean, hey, if if you've got the money in your gaming budget, great. You know, just buy the two hundred twenty dollars storage card because then you double up to two terabytes and everything's gonna run at full SSD speed with you know with all the benefits of the series x's uh next gen uh, and the series s uh you know those next gen hard drives but yeah like the 
the the two things I think are the, the that are that are definitely worth considering are you can take like I already have a two terabyte external drive for my Xbox One because I you know going back to the beginning when they when they were five hundred gigs in twenty thirteen mm-hmm. yeah, you filled that up pretty quickly so I've had an external for a while you can just use it as a pack mule and just uh, you can you can move th- you know, if you're gonna copy games over. You can do it that way from uh, from like when you get your new console. Or the thing I was actually poking around with today is because um, I forgot about this until a Microsoft person pointed it out to me. If if you're upgrading from an Xbox One or One X to a Series S or X, you can use network transfer. It's built right into the console and actually just move everything through your home network. That way you're cut you're saving a ton of time. Uh, and also if like I actually so I blew past for the first time ever, I blew past my Xfinity uh bandwidth cap for this month. Oh my God. Thankfully they sent an email that says they give you one grace grace month where they won't charge me overage fees. But if I do it again, they will. So all right, there goes my free one. But yeah, you could uh if you're upgrading to a new to a Series X. Or S, you can just do the network transfer, and it's very quick. Um, I moved. What did I move? Actually, I guess I moved. I forget what game I moved, but it took. You know, it was a good size game, like a forty gigabyte game, and I think it took six minutes, something like that. So it's fast through your home network. So that's a good option. But otherwise, yeah, you can just totally use a, a cheap external USB drive as a pack mule to store to store your games. Now, um, reminder: you can't. You cannot play next gen games off of an external drive. You can play Xbox One or compatible 360 or original Xbox games off the off of an external drive. But if you do that, you won't get those loading time benefits. So generally speaking, you want to be playing all your stuff off of uh, the internal SSD drive, and you have to with new games. Right. Uh, you could also do what I do, which is not upgrade any of your <laughs> any of your storage at all and just delete things constantly. Uh, <laughs> which is the the. But maybe then you have to re-download thing. them. That's the I only. Know. That's the only problem. Yeah. The thing, at least, there is like I juggle. Am I really going to go back to this game? Yeah. yeah that's that's, a, that's what I struggle with, and I'm like, and I ended up um in in my console, I ended up um, upgrading the internal hard drive. Um, and it, now I really don't have that issue, but I'm even like that on my phone. I'll be like, am I really going to use this app? Am I really going to play this? And I, I I was actually doing that earlier today on Steam, on my computer. I was um, mm-hmm. installing, um, uh, funny enough, Among Us, and because uh, I had bought it and I'm just now getting a chance to install it because I really haven't been home much. And uh I was sitting there going through, there was games that had updates and I was like, these aren't even big updates, but am I really about to play these anytime soon? No. <laughs> Uninstall them. This is no point. I have the space, but just w- get rid of it. Whatever. Yeah. And I think for those bigger games, and of course, as games continue to get larger, um, it is going to be more of a hassle to kind of do that process. But I don't want to ignore that there is probably a very large faction of us out there who just say, Master Chief Collection, you stay on forever. You will yeah. never leave. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> However, uh, last year's Call of Duty, when I'm already playing this year's, does it really need to be here? You're taking up so much space. So. Right. I right. do that too. I have certain games that have permanent hard drive status where they'll yes. never get deleted. Lifetime member. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and Master Chief Collection's one of them, and GTA Five's another one. I think I think I think those are my only two that are just like they never leave. Yeah, you got you got those permanent ones. If you if you guys out there listening have permanent games that are just baked into your hard drive, please let us know, because I got to know. Um, also, uh, I am a little more inclined to buy this because it's a memory card, and I have a very soft spot for memory cards. Uh, you know, they're, they're not really a thing that we have as much anymore, but, you know, uh, I hope we get to see more of them. And I, I guess the final point I would add, not that, I mean, we have a great audience, but lest anyone try to turn this $220 one terabyte expansion card into a console war thing, it's probably going to cost just as much to do this on PS5 because <laughs> yeah. as we were talking about, it's not Microsoft, you know, taking just huge profits. It's just the cost of the technology. Right, right. Yeah, it's just technology doing its thing. And now we have a little bit of a follow-up from last week. We had 
so much news. Um, of course, Bethesda is now part of the Xbox family. All the Zenimax media stuff is all part of Xbox. And we have some exciting news with that uh, <laughs> because Doom Eternal is coming to Games Pass on October 1st. Pika, did you get a chance to uh, play Doom Eternal yet? I have not, but it's on my list because yeah. I have admittedly never played a Doom game. Um, now, in my defense... In my defense, because I know there's a lot of games where I'll tell people I've never played them. And they're like ready to chase me out of town with pitchforks and <laughs> torches. But I, when the original Doom came out, again, showing my age here, that was one of those things. It was a little too gory for me to be that I was not allowed to play. Same. Um, we're talking about Doom 64 here, obviously. Um, and then when the when they remade it, um, I was like, this actually seems really fun. I'm liking the, let me just run in here and kind of go commando to like metal music. Like, I don't know. It was just like, it seems like one of those games that was always very like uh, a good stress reliever. Um, and seeing, I actually love watching other people play. And I think it's it's fun because everybody plays it in kind of their own way. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, and I've heard nothing but good things about it. I've got actually somebody that's in my community that just, swears by it. I mean, he goes back and replays it and he'll play it on like all these different difficulties and things like that. Now, I won't do that because I just play games on normal mode and keep it at that because I'm just, you know, I'm not going to play like hellish mode or whatever else, but <laughs> it's, it's actually on my list. And if I'm not mistaken, um, I might actually have been given a code for it on PC. I need to try that. So okay. I'm not adding it to my list, though. I'm not adding it to my list, but I am because I do have Game Pass. But I was about to say, you're about to have it on October 1st. Uh, if I don't have it on PC, yes, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to take advantage of it and get it because, uh, yeah, like I said, I've heard nothing but good things about it and it seems really fun. So, uh, someone who can tell you nothing about good things about it is Ryan Caffrey because we know <laughs> you're a very big Doom fan. Uh, oh, please tell us your much. excitement about this. For, uh, I know Pika didn't mean to, but she made me feel really, really old by saying <laughs> that Doom 64 was the original Doom. Because so I was thinking, like, she said earlier she's 26, so that means she wasn't, she actually wasn't, you actually weren't born when the original Doom came out in 1993. 93 was the original Doom, which oh, I remember. Gosh. And yeah, I was a kid for that, I guess I would have been 13. I was 13 when that game came out. <laughs> um, but, but anyway uh yes doom eternal is fantastic and like no joke like setting all the all the jokes aside it is i i think it's a game of the year nominee if uh i will definitely be lobbying for it to be one of our i believe we cut it off at 10 mm -hmm. uh nominees and it's and we've we've had some like we've had a bunch of 10 out of 10 scores this year and i gave doom a nine which i stand by very much so I, I think it's a game of the year nominee. And I think just as far as Xbox goes, I think it's the best first person shooter that the Xbox has seen in a long time. I mean, full respect to like Apex Legends. It's, they're obviously completely different games, but Doom Eternal is phenomenally good. So the fact that it's it's coming to Game Pass in three days from right now as we record this, it's just wild that it's just going to be part of and and Whatever the next, because of course it's working on a, you know, Doom 3, whatever they're going to call it. That's going to launch day and date on, it's this, I like, this acquisition hasn't even sunk in yet, really, like in the grand scheme of things. But that's all, just please play Doom Eternal if you have not already. It is amazing. I love it so much. Yeah, and we have a lot more games coming to Game Pass. Uh, Brandon Tyrell, will you tell us, was coming to Game Pass in October. Um, yeah, I sure can in a minute once I find it. <laughs> once there you scroll it is. down. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, no, so, we're, we're halfway around. We're actually running out of time, so I was like, let's get to the, the exciting news. Of our game. <laughs> we've, got, we've got 19 minutes. We're good. Uh, I'll read it slowly okay. then. Xbox Game Pass for October. Uh, <laughs> October 1st, you have Doom Eternal and Drake Hollow, which is actually a cool little village building third person action game. Um, I, I checked that out a little bit. It, it, it looks really good and it's a lot of fun. Um, October 8th, Brutal Legend, Forza Tim Motorsport. Schaefer. Forza Motorsport 7 as well. If you, speaking of 100 gig games, um, super pretty <laughs> car game there. Uh, I Can Fall as well, which I, I don't know anything about. I've never played that one, but I've heard it thrown around a few times. So so I can tell you very quickly about Ink and yeah. Fall. 
So Inkenfell is kind of a, uh, what if you could go to magic school? That's, cool. that's that kind of the premise of it. And so I think it's kind of got that RPG element to it. And I have been very excited for it. So I'm super stoked to hear it's coming on Game Pass. Awesome. Um, and then, of course, you know, we'd be remiss not to mention that November 10th EA Play is being added to Game Pass. So not in October, but something to look forward to next month. Yay. Yeah, we have so much. Uh, now that we've looked forward a little bit, let's look back. So in August 2020, we had a list of best-selling games. Um, and Ryan, do you want to go over these for us? Sure, yeah. The top 10 for August, which, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know that NPD isn't 100% accurate because right. not everybody reports to it, but I still think it's always a fun snapshot of what people are buying. So the number one game for August, no surprise, was Madden NFL 20. Uh, and then UFC 4, which is another recent release, that's number two. Call of Duty Modern Warfare continues to crush. That was number three. And then on PS4, Ghost of Tsushima, super happy for them. That came out in July. I think it made the July list as well. So uh, shout out to Andrew Goldfarb. <laughs> and then you have a run of Nintendo games. Listen to this from five onward there, five through nine. It goes Animal Crossing, which I know will makes Miranda happy. Ring of <laughs> Adventure, which also makes perfect sense because everybody's stuck at home and it's a great way to work out in kind of a fun way. Then Mario Kart 8 Deluxe because Mario Kart is like, it's it's just like always on an NPD list <laughs> if there's a Mario Kart game. Super Smash Brothers still going strong after that. And then uh, Paper Mario, the Origami King. And then rounding it off, another another older game, Mortal Kombat 11. So it's uh, just kind of an interesting list for August, I thought. Yeah, and it's really curious to see these. I, I do like that you noted that Microsoft did get a game in the top 20, though it's the PS4 version of Minecraft. Yeah, if, if, you, <laughs> if you go down, if you extend it out to the top 20, there is one Microsoft game for PS4, which is just kind of hilarious. Yeah, so uh, I also think you had a really great question here for just kind of looking at these best-selling games lists. Like, obviously, you know, Call of Duty always kind of tops the charts, but cyberpunk is this year and i think a lot of people are very excited about this so if we could go around the room and i'm going to start with pika which do you think is probably going to sell more in november call of duty or cyberpunk and they're out like i think a week apart or four like four days apart so uh, they're yeah, pretty like close that. yeah i think mm. call of duty's the 13th cyberpunk's the 19th mm -hmm. mm, that's a hard one um <sighs> People are really excited for that new Call of Duty. I, it's I'm not gonna lie, it looks good. It looks really good. Um, again, I know my best friend he plays every single Call of Duty that comes out, and it's not my cup of tea. But, uh, it, I mean, he is just from what even from what I've seen of it, um, it looks really fun. And see, the thing is with the thing with COD is that's going to kind of appeal to people that really are very casual. Like there's people that are literally buy whole consoles, just like Call of Duty or maybe like a sports game. <sighs> yeah. It's hard to balance just because like, there's so much excitement around cyberpunk and like that comes with the prestige of CG product red doing another massive open world, but it's not even just an open world. It's a, it's a futuristic open world, which is very different from what we've seen them do. And it's, it's exciting. I'm going to go with Cyberpunk. Wow. All right. Brandon Tyrell, what are you thinking? I'm going to go with Call of Duty. Ryan? I want to say Cyberpunk because, like, I, I definitely think Call of Duty will outsell it, like, in subsequent months, December, January. But that burst out of the gate to, like you guys were saying, so much excitement for Cyberpunk. But I'm actually, I'm going to go with Call of Duty only because the thought that I was going to say Cyberpunk, but now I'm changing my thought to Call of Duty simply because unless I'm proven otherwise, I think, I think the marketing for Call of Duty is going to just be astronomically more widespread and prevalent than like for all, I mean, maybe I'll, maybe I'll be surprised and CD Projekt Red will, will have like uh NFL sunday ads and yeah. other things but you know call of duty is going to be on all the big sporting events and all the like they're just 
they spend a fortune on marketing. So I, I'm going to go with Call of Duty. So uh, there's that. There's the fact that I think Call of Duty has 17 days to Cyberpunk's 11 in True. November. Yeah. Uh, not to mention the fact going back three years, Call of Duty is the number one seller in November every single year, except for 2018 when it came out in October. Why did it come out in October? Because Red Dead came out in November. Yeah. Guess what the number two selling game in November was in 2018? Call of Duty. Call of Duty. <laughs> so even, even though it came out the month prior, it still was number two in November. I think it's got a lot going for it here. Obviously, I mean, Kitty touched on it. It's Call of Duty. People buy Call of Duty because that's what they play for 365 days. Um, and in addition to that, I think you're going to see a lot of people who just got their brand new console. They need a game. They want a game right now. They're going to spend that $70 on Call of Duty and then wait to pick up Cyberpunk later on. Cyberpunk is going to sell amazingly well. I don't think it's going to be Call of Duty in November, though. Can I change my answer? <laughs> yes, I didn't even think about the whole marketing thing. And I feel like that was like, OK. And then, like he said, it. It's one of those things that there I know for a fact that there are people that are going to be waiting specifically to wait to pick up Cyberpunk after they get their new next gen console. So right. I switched my answer to Call of Duty. <laughs> all right. Uh, I think uh, across the board, because I was I was sitting here quietly listening to all your reasoning and, and my heart says I want to say Cyberpunk because I'm really excited for Cyberpunk. Right. Right. Uh, but I do. I'm also excited for Call of Duty. We haven't even seen zombies. Me too. That Ra Ra soon. Raven Software is back off the bench mm -hmm. finally after 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm going to go to Call of Duty. So uh, if somehow Cyberpunk outsells Call of Duty in November, we're all wrong. But there's a good chance we'll all <laughs> be right. That <laughs> I think CD Projekt deserves it. I, I love everything that they do. So and, and don't get me wrong. That game is going to sell gangbusters. Um, mm -hmm. But Call of Duty is the juggernaut in November. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see what we got. And no we do have some more news to discuss, but I think we're going to save that for next week because I'm going to get to our loot box. Uh, so we have a very fun Yappa comment, which you can also leave in the comments on IGN.com of our article. Just click in, sign in, one of your sign in profile of choice, and then you can view the Yappa. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at ours. We have a great question from Mark. Hey guys, my name is Mark, big fan of the show. So my question is in relation to Tokyo Game Show, which just wrapped up this past week. Uh, the big announcement from Microsoft there was that xCloud is coming to Japan in early 2021. I've kind of been of the mindset that this is going to be a pretty big deal for the Xbox brand over there. Obviously, they have struggled mightily in the past, but it seems like mobile gaming is a much bigger deal over there than traditional console gaming. Do you think this can be the beginning of the push that Microsoft needs to make the Xbox brand successful in Japan. And if you don't, what do you think they need alongside of it? Thanks so much. Take care. Thank you very much for your question, Mark. Uh, I'm actually very excited about this one because I uh, obviously have a soft spot for covering TGS and games in Japan. Uh, but I want to go to Pika first. What do you think that Microsoft needs to succeed there? Uh, historically, they just haven't clicked very well. Um, I definitely think that the X Cloud can help sort of help them gain foothold in Japan some more. Um, I honestly think that, because isn't, isn't Sony, if I'm not mistaken, a, initially a Japanese-based company? Yeah, so uh, yeah. Nintendo and Sony are both Japanese, so they've got a very strong hold on Japan. Right, right. Okay, that's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure before I started toting off incorrect information. Um, so I think that that, uh, at, the, at its base, is the the really sort of the biggest sort of deciding factor here because that is i mean that's where those companies are based out of um and that is one reason why nintendo games and and consoles always do so well over there um so i don't needless to say i don't ever think that microsoft will sort of become the dominant force or even even necessarily up there where Sony and Nintendo are, but do I think they could definitely gain more foothold than what they've had in previous years? Absolutely. And I'm kind of hoping, honestly, that with the, you know, introduction of the X Cloud, and then even with this next sort of next gen console, um, you know, rounds, 
I I don't know. I feel like maybe maybe this could be sort of something that'll push them ahead. Um, I, that's what I would think because I mean I feel like there's just there's enough selling points for it to where I'm thinking because like honestly, truth be told, um, I've skipped out on my Xbox. So sorry if you hear dogs barking. Um, in the in this last round of consoles, um, and. This I was I was I obviously had an an Xbox 360, and this next one that just got announced I'm even I'm even interested in that like and it's sort of I've seen a lot of people um a lot I follow about three thousand people on Twitter and they're um like okay I think I'm I'm either making the switch back to Xbox or I want both and I've never seen people because these are these are a lot of the same people that I've been following since you know the ps4 and that that generation of consoles was announced and they didn't really have that sort of certainty in their interest with at least having microsoft i'm sorry the xbox in addition the new xbox in addition to the new playstation i have not i did not see that sort of interest with the most previous, the most current round of consoles. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing that now. And so I'm like, okay, I'm just going to maybe kind of assume that considering there's increased interest in the States, maybe that'll kind of bleed over to Japan as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ryan, what's your take on it? I am curious to hear yours as as sort of our resident uh, Japan expert and, and, and uh, sort of anime fan, and you're, you're much more plugged into the culture, but yeah, I think, it's, I, I think Mark, first of all, that was a great question. And I think Mark brings up a great point. I hadn't really thought about xCloud in the context of Japan, but I think he's dead on. And and I think, I do think Microsoft probably needs more Japanese developed games in Game Pass uh, that are that are more familiar and appealing to the Japanese market. But generally speaking, yeah, I guess, I mean, Xbox has been, a literal zero in Japan for a while. You know, they tried super hard in the 360 era with a number of exclusive JRPGs and, and there were some really great games. And then in the Xbox One era, they they didn't invest anything in Japan. So I feel like if xCloud doesn't give them some kind of presence there, then it's that I don't know what else they could possibly do from here on out, it might just be a lost call. I mean, the Series X is launching in gl- worldwide, including Japan, mm-hmm. on November 10th. But but yeah, I think xCloud is the best shot Microsoft has to try and get some, to try and get a presence in Japan. Yeah. Brandon, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I, I mean, to echo Ryan's sentiment, it's a great question. And I mean, at the core of it, I don't really know. But my gut says that it isn't going to change much for a few of the reasons Ryan mentioned. One, uh, xCloud, though it is mobile focused, is more of a supplemental technology to what Xbox already offers. And people aren't buying what Xbox already offers. So you're offering them a new way to play sort of the things that Microsoft is selling, which they've already shown that, that you know, that that entire country is, is I mean, Xbox is, like Ryan said, a literal zero over there. Um, so I don't know that this is what's going to happen. I think software drives hardware sales, software drives interest in gaming. Um, so I think that they need to figure out a strategy to bring Japan into the fold. And I think to do that is through Japanese developers, through creating games and content that is, you know, popular in that region, something that Sony is, is, you know, been doing for, for decades. So I don't think that offering a new way to play things that people don't want to play is going to change things. Um, but you know, I, I'm interested. I, like I said at the beginning, I don't really know, uh, but I don't think it changes things too much. Right. Uh, Brandon, I think you actually put a, a very good point there. It's like, it's great if you can play these on a system that are a platform that might work for you via xCloud and streaming. But if these this system doesn't have the games that you want to play, then what's the point of having it in the first place? Um, and so I think to everyone's point that they do need to really focus on getting those Japanese developers. And I would even say like there's a lot of fantastic indie games. There's a really cool mm-hmm. indie scene in Japan that I think they could maybe even tap into. Uh, Pika had a great point as well about there's like this kind of renewed interest in Xbox, I think, just because of this ecosystem. However, I think this ecosystem in particular really lends itself to more of the Western audience where in Japan, 
the way consoles and stuff happen there are a little bit different. Like you have your PlayStation, maybe you have your Nintendo Switch, but those have all been so focused, again, because they are Japanese companies, focus on Japan first, and then they change and grow, grow out otherwise. And I think, especially with, with Nintendo, they still have that focus on handheld gaming. If you look at Japan, just mobility is such a big thing. And while xCloud is a great kind of step toward that and be able to play on your phone or wherever else, you still have to stream it. Like if you're on you're on a train somewhere and you go under a tunnel, yeah, you're not going to work out the best. But that also means that you don't have to have a big console, and that's really helpful too. So I think there are a lot of elements at play here, but ultimately it does come down to the games and the kind of services that do cater a little bit more to the Japanese market. That's not to say that people don't have interest in Xbox games that already exist. Uh, I know we have some guys at iGym in Japan who like really love Halo, and I remember I was there. We just ha- we were just gushing about Halo the whole time. But uh, kind of also, there's not a very big fan base for that in Japan. So I guess we will see how that changes. So Mark, thank you again for that question. Uh, we are unfortunately out of time. So I think we'll skip the Xbox Unlock Block trivia. Uh, we do have, I- I'm excited for that question because I actually know it pretty well. So I think maybe it, it would be weird for me to uh, to be hosting and then just flip it around on Ryan. So, so we'll take time and maybe give Dustin a fair shot at this as well, maybe. Uh, but let's go ahead and kind of wrap things up. Pika, first, thank you so much for joining us. Where can oh, people absolutely. find you? When are you streaming next? Tell us all the details. Um, I'm Pika Chulita on every platform, Twitter, Twitch, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's just Pikachu and then Lita, L-I-T-A at the end. Um, honestly, just with kind of everything that sort of I've been going on the last like couple weeks slash months. Um, I've made it a point to kind of do away with like a traditional like schedule and more of like a sort of ballpark range. It's like when you might be able to find me. And because I mean, kind of with COVID stuff, it's and everything else that's just been happening. It's it's a lot. So I'm like, OK, and I, mm-hmm. I don't like telling people that I'm going to go live and then I'm streaming on a certain day and then I'm like, well, actually I'm not because I don't feel like it and I'm, or I had a rough day. So um, generally speaking, it's usually anywhere early evening, later in or later at night, um, anytime per week. It's kind of just a random, random thing now, but um, I do tweet out whenever I'm, I'm going live. So you, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll see. Yep. So make sure to follow you there so we can see when you're streaming next. And Ryan, what do you have going on? Well, that, that big old monolith behind me, the Xbox Series X. So uh, that's my life right now, covering that for IGN. <laughs> there are more embargoes, more coverage to come. So stay tuned for that. And again, if you haven't seen the initial preview from this week, please check that out on IGN and or YouTube. And you can find me on Twitter at DMC underscore Ryan. All right. And then Brandon, what you got? Uh <clears throat> Similarly, lots of previews. We're in this cool period now where we're looking at the final previews of the season before the reviews start dropping, and it's all kind of overlapped with next-gen coverage. So uh, the busy season has officially begun. So <laughs> check out IGN literally every day from now through the end of the year for uh, some cool content. And uh, you can find me on Twitter at Brandon Tyra. Man, do I feel that in my bones. It is getting <laughs> so very busy. Uh, you can find me at Havoc Gross. Now it's Havoc with a K pretty much everywhere. Tonight I'm going to be streaming some more Alan Wake. Uh, Ryan, we have to talk about that later because I have thoughts. <laughs> but, yes, I do want to hear what you thought. So we'll yeah. Later. yeah, but as far as all of my good IGN stuff goes, we have just a ton of wiki coverage. Please check out our next-gen wikis. We've been working so hard on them. I know the team is just doing everything they can to scour the internet for all next gen details. So if you want to know what's going on with those systems and how they compare, definitely check those out. Well, for Ryan McCaffrey, Brenda Tyrell, and Pikachu Lita, I'm Miranda Sanchez. Thank you guys so much for joining us for a podcast unlock episode 463. We will see you next week. Bye.